Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today we've got three big stories and uh, I'm just excited to bring it to you. First up, Mass Mutual joins the Bitcoin Club with a $100 million purchase. And this is just one more story of a big organization getting into Bitcoin because no one wants to be first, but nobody wants to be last. Also, Curve partners with MetaMask to help institutions custody DeFi assets. First, we have to take a look at what exactly Curve is and why this is such a big instance for DeFi and what it means for the future. And then finally, on building on our story today, where we talked about banks FOMOing in, Wells Fargo, compares Bitcoin to 1850s gold rush and plans to increase coverage of crypto assets. And it is amazing to me over the last couple of weeks and months how banks have really taken hold of the cryptocurrency digital asset space. And this is yet another example of why 2021 is going to be absolutely enormous. So again, the market in a second, but just to remind everybody the 12 days of Christmas is going to start in four days. And we're going to give away all these great items. All you gotta do is just show up to the show, uh, make a comment on the video and win. And I'll tell you exactly what uh, phrases or words I want you to comment. So uh, that is it. And it's going to be a great time. I want to thank all the uh, people and all the groups that actually came in and donated. I asked a lot of people and every single one of them said, yes, we'd love to donate for the 12 days of Christmas. So that is good. We will start that in four days. Also, the D News Cardano staking pool just passed 5 million in ADA delegations. And uh, it's pretty amazing because we've only been doing this for less than three days and we're already here. So uh, thanks everybody who has signed up. I really appreciate it. And if you're looking for how to actually stake, there'll be a link in the description that looks just like this. It's gonna take you to this handy dandy page. Just click on wallets and it'll scroll all the way down to the actual video, which explains exactly what to do. All right, let's get into today's market quickly and see what the heck is going on. So today it is December 10th. It is 1 p.m. El Paso, Texas time. And here's what we got. So Bitcoin's hanging around 18.4. We take a little bit of a dip, but it's only up a half percent, so no, no big deal. Uh, Ethereum, around 5.60. It's also taking a slump. 58 cents for XRP. Watch out, Tether. Nobody cares. Bitcoin Cash is up a little bit, but again, not a big deal. Stellar up 3.6%. There's a great story about uh, Stellar accepting more stable coins. So that could probably be the reason. Bitcoin SV is still in the top 20. I have no idea why. Monero's up, that's good. Rap Bitcoin, yeah, NEM 6.5 and everything else. And then uh, look at Filecoin, up massively, 22. I mean, not massively, but 1.5% and 1.8 for the week. And there's some uh, really good information I didn't realize until I was in my uh, Trade the Chain account. And we'll go over that at the very last piece. But, but yeah, Filecoin, I think, is, is definitely one to watch. So that's what we have in the dollars. Let's take a look at what that looks like uh, as far as Bitcoin. And why we look at this is because we're trying to see if we would have invested in other altcoins, could we beat uh, Bitcoin? And if you invested in XRP, <laughs> you'd have at 4.6%, so good for you. Bitcoin Cash, 1%, and then, uh, well, 3.4 for Stellar. That's not surprising. Bitcoin SV, 0.3. All right. Point, uh, no, no. 6.7 for NEM. And that's interesting. Wrap Bitcoin, it's supposed to be the same price. So really, it's the same thing, but uh, yeah, sure. It's just, it just wraps them in an ERC-20 token. And uh, not a big thing. Uh, Filecoin up 1.7. But you kind of take a look and you start to go down. Actually, usually as you go down, you're supposed to be able to uh, sometimes see it, but sometimes you don't. And um, it's just a lot of the times, not every time, but a lot of the times, if you just invest in Bitcoin, you do pretty good. Now, you can find those small cap gems and uh, you, you can make a killing, but you got to pick the right one. And they're kind of like penny stocks. I mean, if you're, if you're new, to, new to this whole game, it's kind of like penny stocks. Just find the right one. You got to invest in like 10 or 20 just to find that one that's a winner because you got to make up for all your losses for their 19. Anyhow, that's what's going on in the market. Let's jump into today's top stories. So this one, every time I see stories like this, it just reaffirms that uh, we were all right. We were right to invest into Bitcoin. We were right to get into cryptocurrency digital assets. I mean, I see where it's going. I know it's going to get there. The thing that I don't know is time. And when I see these types of big uh, entities getting into uh, crypto assets, I'm like, oh, it's going to happen a lot faster than what I thought. So Mass Mutual joins the Bitcoin Club with a $100 million purchase. Wow. So Massachusetts Mutual Life Insurance Company bought a $100 million Bitcoin $100 million worth of Bitcoin for its general investment account, the latest sign of mainstream acceptance. And yeah, I mean, Mass Mutual is, it's its a pretty well-known name. So when you have people, especially in the baby boomer era, baby boomer, baby boomer era, um, 
<laughs> and they're looking at like, ah, you know, what are people getting into? What is what are some solid investments? And they take a look at something like this where Mass Mutual is getting in, or like we're going to talk about Wells Fargo. They start to think about, well, maybe I should get into that because I tr I don't know what Bitcoin is, but I trust Mass Mutual. I, I don't know what you know Ethereum is, but you know I really do trust Wells Fargo, even though they shouldn't. Uh, and they'll get into it, and and that's just how it is. It's a it's a social proof, and that's really what it comes down to. Anyhow, the investment is a tiny one for the Springfield Mass based insurance company, whose general investment account totaled nearly $235 billion. Man, that's a lot of money. There must be a ton of money in, in uh, life insurance. So, Mass Mutual purchased the Bitcoin through a New York based fund management company called NYDIG or NY Digital, which has about $2.3 billion of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies under management. So, Again, a lot of these entities, they can't hold cryptocurrencies because it's not legal for them to do so. So they'll pay a fee. They'll pay a, you know, a pretty good premium, just like um, with Grayscale. And they'll say, hold this for me and, and you know, 20%, no big deal because we're going to we're gonna go up multiples of, you know, 2, 5, 10x. We don't really care. And everybody makes money. Everybody makes money. Everybody's happy. Everything's cool until it's not. Any other company said the Bitcoin investment was based on a broad strategy to take advantage of new opportunities while remaining diversified. And they state this gives us measured yet meaningful exposure to a growing economic aspect of our increasingly digital world. See, they get it. And people are starting to get it. And they're starting to wake up. And it took a long time. I mean, it really took a long time since 2017. But now that people just saw the resiliency of the of just the crypto assets in general, all of them, I mean, at least the top, you know, 50 or 20, we'll say. Now they're going like, hmm, maybe this isn't something to be played around with. Maybe we should get into it. And Pompliano said it perfectly. He said, you know what? It's at one point, it's going to be detrimental to not have exposure to Bitcoin and you're going to really miss out. So let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on.